created Eve. They saw God. And that's why the devil hates you and I. Because when he looks at us, he's reminded of the Creator. There is something about us that when he looks at us, it reminds him of the divine. Even just the image and the likeness reminds him of what happened when he said, I will ascend and I will be higher than the Most High. It reminded him of that faithful day that when he tried his foolishness, that he was kicked out. And so he can no longer try to, try to climb above the throne of God, but he has, tried to done, he has tried to do his best to come against the next best thing. That if... That if humanity is in the image of God and valued by God and treasured by God and Satan can't touch God directly, then he's going after his creation. Going after his creation and bringing corruption. Going after his creation and bringing sin. Going after creation and bringing, bringing uh, hunger and thirst and wars and famine and broken families and, and sexual addiction and brokenness and, and, and confused identity. We can only know who we really are. Not by our circumstances and not by what anybody tells us and not even what we think about ourselves. We get our identity from the one who created us. And he created us more than just dirt. From dirt. He created the animals from the earth, formed them, fashioned them. But it says about his special creation, man, that yes, he dug into that clay of the earth and fashioned the human form, but he did, didn't just leave it there. He stooped down and breathed his breath. He took what was from inside of him, his breath, and breathed it out and into man. Man is not just flesh and blood. Man is also spirit. And the spirit that we have in us is eternal. This is why Jesus came and died on the cross so that all who called on the name of the Lord, that, that their soul, their eternity would be purchased and secured and preserved and protected from the punishment of hell. When we pass from this life into the next experience, it's not just that the light goes out and, you know, everything blinks out and there's a suspension of consciousness and there's nothing. Nothingness. Because there's nothing about God that has an expiration date. God breathed his life in humanity. Therefore, from humanity's birth on planet Earth, that's his starting point. But his life never ends. The dust formed of the dust of the earth... That may return back to the dust. But the spirit and the life that was put in that earth pod continues on because God is eternal, because God is spirit. Because of sin, it will either pull you into hell or it, because of the blood of Jesus, it will cause you to ascend as he ascended. And that ascension is not just when we take the earth suit off, but because we have his spirit within us. It's not just a human experience. 
It's an experience of God dwelling in us. The Bible says that when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that the Holy Spirit takes residence uh, on the inside of us and that we actually become one spirit with him. That's why the enemy fights us so hard as well. Because his spirit is in us. He, come, he comes against man and bringing all the, all the common ailments, and woes and things and circumstances of life. But he especially comes against the believer. Because we have the spirit of God in us. So now it's not just reminding him of fallen human man, but still made in the image of God. And I can't touch God, but I can touch his creation. It's not just that. But no wonder the enemy comes against believers, especially because God has made one step, one foot closer to the earth in being resident in the believer. Satan still can't touch us. Because we're secure in Christ. But that authority and that rule and that reign of heaven is now in the earth. Satan came against Jesus, tempted him in the, in the wilderness. And it says that after the temptation that Satan fled. And I believe it's the book of uh, Luke that says that Satan left him until a more opportune time. It was bad enough that Satan had to deal with one God-man in the earth. 100% God, 100% man. It was bad enough. But now because of the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came upon the church then he had 120 that were filled with the same power and the same spirit that Jesus operated in. And then it just caught like wildfire from there. No longer one man, one being representing the kingdom of heaven with that authority and that power, the only authority and the only power to destroy his work, the devil's work. But now 120 with that same power, with that same spirit, with that same anointing, going about doing good and destroying every oppression of the enemy. Down through church history until now, multiplied Millions baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire, destroying and consuming and, and wreaking havoc on the kingdom of darkness. No wonder the enemy comes against the believer. We are targeted especially because not just that we represent God and that we were created in his image, but because of the damage that we can do when we rise up in that authority and in that power to overthrow him and keep him underfoot. They presented to him Gold, which represented kingship. And he took that gift and shared it with us. Made us kings and priests. Made us under rulers, if you will. Frankincense, divinity. He didn't just leave us as dust and as human beings, but he made us new creations. He put his spirit within us. He caused us to be seated where he is seated. He caused us to, to become, uh, 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 to have access to his power and to his blessing and to become sharers and partakers of the divine nature. Second Peter 1, 3 and 4. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Myrrh prophesied the death of Christ. 
was used in burials to keep the, uh, keep the odor down. And even though it prophesied of the death of Christ, Jesus, when he turns and when he receives those gifts and he turns it around and gives us back those gifts, was also symbolic in that in Christ, even though he died, even though he paid the penalty, that according to the book of Romans, that we have the gift of seeing death to sin. That says, what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we would no longer be slaves of sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. In the death of Christ, he who knew no sin became sin on our behalf, took our sin, our shame, our guilt, And it was buried with him. And that as we call upon the name of the Lord, that as we identify ourselves with what, what he has done, that sin has no longer any reign over us because we are dead to sin in Christ. Because Christ took that sin when he died and he buried it. The power of sin is broken. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Christ represented us in the scheme of redemption and atonement. And it says, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That when we look and see what, what he has done and we say, I'll take some of that for myself. I'll take that for me. We no longer identify with the sinful flesh. We no longer identified with the old way, with the old man. But we identify with what Jesus has done. And part of what Jesus has done is, is put sin to death. Fallen man, when temptation comes, has no other choice but to sin. But as new creations in Christ, as those who identify with him and look to his death, burial, and resurrection, that when temptation comes, as believers, because we are dead to sin, because we identify with what Jesus did, we have been brought out under slavery to sin, and we have the ability and the power to say no. To resist the devil and to flee. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. If you resist the devil, he will flee. Fallen man can resist the devil all that he wants. But he has no choice because the devil is his master. Sin is his master. But we have a different master. We have a different Lord because of the death of Jesus. The death of Christ 
means death to sin for us. The myrrh prophesied that he would die. And in his death, he gives it back to us, presents it to us as a gift that if we identify with his death, then that the power of sin will be broken. Not only is it prophetic, prophesying of his death, not only is it symbolic that we are uh, 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 dead to sin and alive unto God through Christ Jesus, but it also prophesies that one day there will be a death to death. A death to death. In what is known as the final resurrection or the believer's resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection from the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. But in each other, uh, but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits. After that, those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to the Father, or to the God and Father, when he has abolished all rule and all authority and all power, for he must reign until he has put. All his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be abolished is death. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Those who are in Christ, though our mortal bodies, our earthly bodies may pass from this life we have, eternal life, and eventually, one day, the Bible says that the dead in Christ will rise. We will be given new bodies. It says that the corruptible will put on incorruption. We will resurrect. We will be raised again. As we have been Seated with Christ because we identify with his death. We cannot just identify with his death without identifying and experiencing the power of his resurrection. Because Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose again. And it's not that just that that the body of sin and the penalty of sin and the power of sin was destroyed, but Jesus, through his resurrection, raises us up into new life and puts us in a new place, a new position, a new standing before God. No longer are we under the whip of the taskmaster of the enemy, but we stand before the Father as sons and daughters, holy and clean and pure. And as we stand before him in the spirit, God doesn't just perfect and purify and resurrect us in the spirit in just one aspect because we are body, soul, and spirit. And what Jesus did on the cross wasn't just for our spirit. It wasn't just for our soul. But one day in the finality of things, that when the final enemy of death is put to death, we will put on incorruption. And we will live not just as spirit beings before him, but we will have new bodies Resembling our old bodies, but made out of heavenly material. That will no longer undergo death or weakness or frailty or sickness or disease. We have been saved from the power of sin. But not just saved from the power of sin... 
We have been saved. We have been preserved and per, per, uh, protected until at the timetable of the Father that in that day, according to 1 Corinthians 15, that we will be perfected. That just as we stand perfect before him in holiness and righteousness in the spirit. That one day before God, we will stand before him perfectly and wholly and righteously in a physical being. They brought to Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It prophesied that he was a king. It was symbolic of his divinity and that one day he would die. But Jesus never won just for himself shared those gifts with those who identify with him. He brings us from a place of being in bondage and under the thumb of the devil and brings us into a place of kingship and, and rulership with him. That's the gold. He takes that old sin nature, that old fallen man, transforms us, and by the power of God and the word of God and the promises of God causes us to become partakers and sharers of the divine nature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. In the frankincense and in the, in the myrrh. Not just prophetic about his death, but one day those who see themselves in him. That there would be a death blow to the final enemy of death and of sin. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Not just gifts that Jesus keeps for himself, but he turns around and freely shares it with all those. Who will come to him. Will you bow your head today? You are a father who knows how to give good gifts to his children. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Lord, I thank you that it's not just gold. And what we as on this earth value as gold is not just spices of frankincense and spices of myrrh. But Lord, that those things are symbolic of spiritual realities and truths that you have for every single one of us. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that this morning that that gift of gold, of rulership and dominion over the work of the enemy would be enjoyed and experienced all the days of our lives. That when the enemy comes in, that you would raise us up as a standard against the enemy to say you've come this far and no further. Father, that you would transform our thinking. Where the enemy would stand as an accuser and point to the past and point to faults and point to failures, that, that you have given us an advocate. That we are set free and at liberty. That it is no longer human nature. But now we have access to a divine nature. And Father, that the power of sin 
and the consciousness of its separation between us and a holy God is, is obliterated because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And Lord, I thank you that, that you will help us enter into the fullness. Make use fully of those gifts that you have provided to us through Christ. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you have come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And Father, I pray for every single one of us here that we would experience that abundance of good life through the gifts that were represented from the wise men, the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh, that we would enter into the fullness experience the fullness, have full consciousness and revelation of kingship and divinity and power over even the final enemy called death. Thank you for power over sin. Thank you for power over the enemy. Lord, I thank you for your people today, that you bless them, that you keep them, that you cause your face to shine upon them, that you give them peace, that you lead them forth in victory every day of their life. Lord, I thank you for touching them, for blessing them, for helping them. And we thank you for your goodness today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you'd like to rededicate your life to the Lord, pray this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I believe that God raised you from the dead. Fill me with your spirit and help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer and were sincere, I encourage you to go to our website, www.firebrandrevival.com and let us know today. We wanna thank you for watching the broadcast today. We are so blessed by those who sow seed and our faithful partners. We wanna thank you for giving so that we can continue to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And remember, faith always moves forward, the kingdom is advancing, and you are taking ground. We'll see you next time. Be blessed.